what makes Open 3D Engine shine as opposed to the other engines is um, kind of its underlying architecture that allows the uh, for the communication between different parts of the engine. Um, they've got a really nice and well thought out event driven system that has, as we've been working with it, or at least as I've personally been working with it, has kind of changed how I program. Hi, this is your host of Limparthia, and today we have with us Jack Kalina, project manager of Project Eureka at the Open 3D Foundation and AJ Biswas, lead programmer for once again Project Eureka. Before we talk about this whole collaboration between Open 3D Foundation and RIT University, I would like to just quickly understand what is Open 3D Foundation all about? So the Open 3D Foundation is a uh, sort of umbrella organization for housing the Open 3D Engine project. It's part of the Linux Foundation and is really focus on making the open 3D engine. When we look at, you know, open, you know, these, these uh, 3D game engine, there are already, depending on how you look, you know, Unreal, I mean, there you need tons of there. What is the need of, you know, uh, this project or this foundation? So the main difference, the primary difference, the selling difference actually, um, between open 3D engine and the big engines that are out there like Unity and Unreal is that Open 3D or O3DE for short is uh, fully open source and that what that means is that anybody can essentially take the engine and uh, they can use it for their own purposes and modify it for their own needs. They can fork it and um, yeah, like I said they can kind of create specifically what they want with it um, and they can kind of as a result, they don't have to deal with things like licensing um, and things like that that you would have to deal with from uh, Unity and Unreal. And it's uh, also extremely modular uh, in terms of its architecture as compared to Unity and Unreal and those other engines, uh, which allows for a lot of um, easy like flexibility and extendability uh, in terms of like what you can do with it. So is the primary idea behind uh, the Open 3 engine is to offer a free as in free beer or because you know unity and they also offer free versions to individuals or smaller teams you know that you can leverage all the ideas more to do with you know the the free as in freedom or open source idea where you also get to see the guts of it uh, and you have more control over it so i just want to understand when we do talk about the the difference between the commercial ones and the open source one what are the clear benefits which developers can see game developers can see there at least for us so we're not you know the ones leading the development or actually part of the foundation we're just developers working in it and i think we kind of see both we both see that sort of it's free to use we don't have to worry about paying royalties or licensing fees for the game when we publish it and then we also can essentially do a dive into the part of the engine to figure out why an issue isn't working or to make a fix that we need or if there's a feature that we want to add that isn't already there we can just go right in add it put in a pull request and then get it available for everyone else so i think it's for us at least it definitely feels like both i would say that um the primary thing is that um, you can do whatever you want to the engine you have access to all the code it's all completely open source hence the name um you have access to all that and as a result you can also modify it in whatever way you see fit, which is not something you can do with uh, any of the current engines. So it goes back to the same analogy if you look at, you know, why, I mean, it's not that why, but Mac OS, Windows versus using Linux based distribution like Ubuntu or Fedora or, you know, RHEL or SUSE or Arch or Gentoo, you get that freedom, that control over tinkering and then, you know, so, it, yeah, it does. Uh, now, uh, let's talk about Project Eureka. Uh, what is the goal behind this project? So Project Eureka is a partnership between RIT and Magic Spell Studios at RIT and the Open 3D Foundation. The goal is to provide funding for student teams to take a game they are already working on or want to start working on and have them work for whatever the set amount of time they decide on to uh, create their game, publish it, release it, in Open 3D Engine. So for us, the development is around about six months of development. The primary like benefits that students get from um, 
uh, doing such a thing is that we get things like connections and we get to put ourselves out there like we are right now as we speak. Um, it's like these are the primary reasons why at least we are doing this. Um, it's because this is definitely a very good opportunity for undergraduates such as ourselves to uh, kind of get our foot into, into the industry. All while at the same time for, from the open 3 ds uh, perspective, they get to utilize this project um, to get their own engine out there, uh, get it more noticed, and also um, from the Project Eureka kind of doubles as sort of a testing sort of thing for them as well, because as we develop this game in an engine that is still largely in development, they find a lot of bugs that we come across and we open up issues for them to look at, and uh, like for example, over these past five or six months that we've been developing, um, we found a lot of things for them to work on that I, I'm pretty sure that it would have taken otherwise would have taken them a while to realize that was something that they need to deal with um, right right then and there. Um, so this has been kind of a win-win situation for both sides, in my opinion. I want to go back to the point that we were discussing earlier because you brought in Project Eureka. Is that if you look at uh, game developers, uh, of course. It may be different from somebody building a game, writing a game for commercial purpose, or somebody writing a game just for fun, just exploration. I mean, we do all, we do both things, right? A lot of things for, for just for fun, and a lot of things for commercial. From the perspective of game developer, and let's just forget about that it's free of cost or other things. Uh, what what are the benefits that you see of using you know Open 3D engine? versus commercial engine is like, I, once again, I'm going purely from a de game developer's perspective. Uh, it could be either more work or it could be less work because of the open source. So, so talk about that experience. I would say that from a purely development perspective, what makes Open3D Engine shine as opposed to the other engines is um, kind of its underlying architecture that allows the uh, for the communication between different parts of the engine. Um, they've got a really nice and well thought out event driven system that has, as we've been working with it, or at least as I've personally been working with it, has kind of changed how I program, to be honest. It's really nice. Um, and on top of that, like I said earlier, the game or the engine is modular. Uh, and what that essentially means is that it's just, it's all broken up into what they call gems or just plugins. And the creation of a new plugin is actually really seamless. Um, it's I mean, I haven't actually, looked into how hard or difficult it is to create your own plugin for Unreal or Unity, but um, I haven't really, um, I've, from what I've seen, it's probably a bit more, uh, there is a bit more nuance to it than there is with Open3D Engine, because uh, with O3D, it's actually a really simple process. So. And of course, as you said, you know, the Open3D Engine is in the very early stage, you know, it's, it's still in development, but uh, what role do you folks, of course, uh, you know, it's not, and you're not building a next company, so it's, uh, I'm not looking from that perspective, but what role do you see for the larger gaming uh, market? Uh, and we can also draw some comparison that where, you know, if you look at Ubuntu or if you look at Steam Deck or Steam, you know, it is leveraging Linux, you know, it, it enabled them to bring a device also, Steam Deck is there, Steam Deck version 2, OLED is also out now there. So it does enable a lot of, a new business opportunities. So, so when you look at uh, either Project Eureka or you look at Open 3D Engine, what kind of market possibility you see there? It may be hard to say at this point, but it's still, if you look at the larger market, I mean, just from the fact that it's open source, you can use it without licensing, all that. You look at what happened, you know, month, two months ago with Unity, where they completely changed their pricing plan and threw everyone for a loop. We were here like, wow glad we're not working in Unity because we don't even have to worry about this because it's all just open source, it's all free to use. So I think, you know, I think that'll probably be one of the major impacts besides how modular and the, the eBus says, like working in it has initial hurdles, but once you figure it out, it's so nice to work in. But I think in terms of like a market impact, having a sort of third open source option for 3D besides Unity and Unreal, I think that's going to be its biggest impact. And I think the fact that, in my opinion, the engine is the most easily customizable of the three. What kind of games you folks are developing, if you're developing any at this point? Project Eureka, obviously the point is that students make a game um, for the allotted amount of time. For us, that, that time has been from about um, late May to December 31st, and we plan to release early January. Um, 
so our game that we're making, uh, the game name is called State of Matter. Uh, it is a science fiction, futuristic, uh, first-person puzzle shooter combination. Um, so the short premise is that you are kind of an agent for the uh, Earth Society, and you're and you're tasked with going to an abandoned mining station uh, on an asteroid, like a big asteroid, and you have to acquire, you have to go and find and retrieve a really rare new resource for them. Um, but over time, as you play the game, you will come to understand the mysteries of why it was abandoned, what happened to everyone. As a heavy gamer myself, of course, this is a very, very opinionated view of preferences that I do like good visual. I like good graphics. Yes, I can play uh, Legend of Zelda on, on, on my Switch as well. But I also like the graphics of, you know, uh, uh, Ghost of Tsushima, beautiful game there. So from graphics perspective, how mature is the platform and how mature is your game? Um, for graphics... Um... Graphics is largely handled by the engine, and they've got what they call the Atom Renderer, uh, which is uh, again, it's easy to, it is pretty simple to work with. Um, as for in, in terms of the graphics itself, I would definitely say it's definitely top notch, uh, especially if you know how to work with it. Um, it can be a bit difficult to understand exactly how to work with it. Uh, like there are, you know, engine is still in development. There are maybe a couple features that are. Uh, not quite native yet, but there are also some features that I'm actually glad are there that aren't there in Unity and Unreal, um, like specifically how they do their lighting system. Um, and um, if you can use it correctly and well, then your game can definitely look very nice. In terms of our game, it would be pretty difficult for a team of five with one artist to hit the Ghost of Tsushima level of art, so we're focused more on a pretty stylized, like low poly, hard edge. Uh, sort of sci-fi looking uh, art style. So it's more or less like, you know, just the way Blender was, is for 3D modeling, very mature, very advanced, a lot of, so, you know, this open 3D engine is also of the same caliber. It's had a lot of powerful, is that correct? Kind of, we can draw the parallel there so people can relate to that. Yeah, if I had to compare Unity's native lighting system to O3D's, I would absolutely take O3D's lighting system over Unity. Um, personally, I do think Unity's lighting native lighting is a little bit out of date compared to what you see today, especially with Unreal. Um, uh, I, I just think that overall O3D just looks better than Unity these days. So. When we look at Open3D Engine and if we look at you know the other you know, commercial players, does that it, it, this open source nature give you an edge that you can actually move much faster because you don't have to really worry about the big organizations, big monolith, big developer cycle, so you folks can move much faster, just the way Linux, Linux kernel can move faster than computer. So when the new technologies, new hardware comes into play, anybody can go in there, submit a patch or you know a feature. Just, just talk about the pace of development. I would say that um, with the pace of the development of the project, um, because it's open source, I think that a lot of the times um, it is easier. Like it, the integration of like new features is quicker uh, because with Unity, um, there's of course ex third-party plugins. But uh, when it comes to third-party plugins, those aren't created by the Unity dev team. Those are created by other people, and as a result, that has to go through a bit of a process in order to get um, like officially onto like the uh, um, the asset store, for example, or something like that. Uh, whereas with O3DE, um, like I said, there's really like you can create your own gem, which is how, which is what they call their plugins. Uh, anyone can create a gem that they want, and these gems are modular. They can be integrated in any project, and there really isn't much of an approval process. You can create it, and then you can literally just start, um, you know, notifying other people in the community like, hey, I have this this plugin, or I have this gem, and it does the X Y Z. Um, Feel free to go ahead and use it if you want, kind of thing. We have been talking about the rosy picture. Let's look at some of the you know challenges when you compare uh, Open 3D Engine, which is a relatively new and open source project, versus when you look at commercial projects. What are some of the challenges, or pain points that you feel that developer up come across, uh, or you have to deal with? I mean, I think one of the biggest sort of pain points with O3D is just that it's so much newer than something like Unity or Unreal, where they've been in development for years upon years now and then O3D started really like two years ago so some things are either not there or not documented super well or whatever it may be so there's definitely a sort of learning curve at the start you have to get over but 
you know, it's it's really a community thing. So when there's when you know it's like, hey, there's no documentation on this, you can kind of just hop into like the official Discord or wherever and be like, hey, anyone know how to do this or like, is there a way we can get documentation up for this so I can understand it? So there there are definitely pain points in figuring out how everything works and all the different pieces, but uh, it, it's once you're sort of over that hump, it's all good. Can I actually add something to that real quick? Uh, regarding the documentation, you reminded me that um, that's also another part of the engine that's very easy to infl to uh, kind of um, iterate on uh, because the documentation is by with from with like Unity and Unreal, those are handled specifically by those dev teams. But the documentation with O3D, sure, it's primary primarily handled by the O3D team, but it can actually be iterated on by anyone because uh, at the end of the day, that entire documentation website is. Um, just a giant GitHub, GitHub repository. Anybody can add to that documentation however they see fit. Of course, there's an approval process with that uh, before they get it in. Um, but um, the point is, anyone can uh, anyone can uh, can integrate whatever they want with it. Uh, if there's something they feel that needs to be added, um, then they can add it. Um, and I think that's really nice, um, considering the open source nature of this uh, this engine. Um, uh, like like Jack said, the engine's still largely in development. So uh, with Unity and Unreal, you have these giant forums with uh, massive communities around them. But pretty much, if whenever you have a problem with the engine, you can look up like you can look it up on the forums. Chances are somebody else has had this problem and it's been solved. Um, but with Open 3D, there really isn't that um, massive resource that you have. Um, like Jack said, you really have uh, it's a tightly knit community for now. And it's like the Discord server. It's about it. Um, there's also a Reddit page, but um, again, it's uh, not nearly as much. And a lot of the times, the problems that we have are problems that um, haven't been talked about or no one else has really come across before. So what we end up doing instead is we've kind of had to learn how to dive deep into the engine's code and architecture to understand exactly what things are doing. Um, and with the help of uh, since because of the nature of Project Eureka, we get direct access to help from the de developers themselves. Uh, we can figure out the problems that we're having. Uh, some of the times that uh, they are actual engine bugs. Some of the times they are things that we just didn't realize this is how it worked. Uh, we thought it worked this way, but it actually worked that way. Um, it's been quite the process. Um, not something that we were used to at first, but as we get used to it, I'd say that it was actually a benefit to all of us because we have a lot more experience now with um, getting to understand software that doesn't have much of a community backing it as compared to other software like it that is a lot more popular. Why should, you know, game developers, it doesn't matter whether commercial or hobbies, whether they for, why they should look at this engine and consider it? I would say, first of all, um, that the engine has a bit of a steeper learning curve compared to the current ones out there right now, simply because of the fact that it's still in development. Um, but... I would also say that for someone who wants to get into it to kind of uh, publish something, um, I would say that considering the resources that are available, um, the Discord server like uh, is actually very nice. Like yes, I like I said, the community is not as large as um, the other ones, but it's um, you would as a result instead you would actually get you are a lot more likely to get real help from the actual developers themselves as compared to Unity on Unreal, where most of the time, um, if there's a question you have to, uh, you, you need asked, it, most of the time you'll get an answer from someone else who is also just a, uh, a, a customer of the engine. Um, uh, here, there are obviously plenty of other people who um, use the engine um, for their own purposes, but the developers are a lot more active with helping the community, uh, in my opinion. Um, and I think that's because of the fact that it's a bit more closely knit. Now let's look at what kind of developers should look at this engine. Well, the engine is specific, specifically meant for, uh, well, it's not specifically meant, but it definitely uh, was built with the uh, idea of being AAA in mind. Um, so it definitely is, um, the, I would say the primary use of the engine, um, the vision of it anyway, is um, to be used for AAA purposes, so made, uh, used by large companies. Uh, I think the idea here with the engine is that a large company would take the engine, they'd fork it, then they'd modify it in whatever way they see fit, and then they would use that modified engine to create their game. Um, in terms of like um, 
Like that is basically the idea with it. I would definitely say that it's still definitely usable for any other kind of developer as well. Indie developers, like we're indie developers, right? So um, it's not to say that indie developers aren't specifically the greatest uh, audience for this kind of engine. As a matter of fact, I would say that uh, indie developers are a pretty good audience for this engine as well. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, if only because, like I said, um, there's a good community around it. The community's not as big, but it's very it's very useful. Um, and that um, it, when you kind of understand, uh, when you get like a good feel for the engine, um, development actually does become pretty quick uh, once you actually get a good feel for it. So somebody can use it to make the new, the next Gorilla Tag or Among Us if they want. If they right? wanted to. Uh, like I said, we haven't actually looked into um, what the what the stage of development is for VR games. Um, but from what we've seen in the community, people have been asking a whole lot of questions regarding it. And um, there's definitely support for it. Like I've, we've seen snippets of people developing in VR. So it's definitely in the engine and people have been doing cool things with it. So. If you're coming from specifically the perspective of being a student like we are, and you want to um, get your get kind of get your foot into the industry and kind of spice up your portfolio, um, I would honestly say like uh, work on an open source project. Uh, it's really it's really useful because um, an open source project such as Open 3D Engine, um, even though we are not specifically supposed to work on the engine. We're just supposed to work on the game within the engine. We have ended up working on the engine uh, directly to uh, get in like some features that we wanted to have for the game. And as a result, um, at least I can say personally, my understanding of C++ and programming concepts in general has skyrocketed since the beginning of this project. And um, and that it, that might simply be because of the fact that Open 3D Engine is still in development. So when you come across things like bugs and crashes with the engine, and then you start learning how to debug such a massive code base, code base um, that skill of learning how to under, uh, understand such a big professional code base can bring you pretty far into the industry uh, if you're a software if you're going into software development like I am. Um, I would say that's definitely something that uh, other people would want uh, should consider looking into working on an open source project. So. AJ, Jack, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about uh, you know this gaming engine. As I said, you know I'm heavy gamer myself, so of course I'll be looking forward to uh, downloading and playing this game on the Steam. Uh, and I would love to chat with you folks again whenever you are working on the next game or to just to get an update on the project. But I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you very much. This was a lot. This was great. Chris, glad to be here.